Welcome to this episode of The Sugar Show with training and inspiration for beauty sugar professionals and those who really want to learn to sugar. This is season three, episode two, and this is actually part three in our three-part series with Kenesha Coleman, the beauty CPA. 2021 is all about being sweet and strong this year, and this episode really addresses the strong. We want you to get back to basics and know your business numbers so you can have a strong foundation in 2021. Kanisha is one of the kindest and most easy to understand CPAs that I've met in a long time. We hope you enjoy part three of our series. Hey, welcome back, Mama. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It is so great to have you in our pocket to guide us in this journey so many people are, are really trying to get organized and, and tighten up their business. So they really are making the most out of their business. In the last two episodes, we talked about how to classify yourself and how to classify and start your business, if that's what you so choose. And now I really want to dive in with you and with the audience on how to really understand your beauty business numbers. So you're an awesome sugaring professional. The people are pouring in, you're making all this money. It just goes into your business account. You're taking some out for taxes. You've classified yourself appropriately. Now what? Now it is time. Mm -hmm. It is time to really dive into the numbers, right? So like Shannon said, you guys are going to be popping. You're going to be making all this money. That's right. Successful. And then you have, you have this cash sitting here, right? You understand, you need to understand what went in, what went out. You need to really, really understand the story behind the numbers. I always tell people, okay, so why is it important to know your numbers? It's important to know your beauty business's numbers for three main reasons. One, you want to understand always the overall financial health of your business. You want to know how you're doing. Right. I mean, it's the equi- not knowing is the equivalent of living paycheck to paycheck. And we didn't become, you know, entrepreneurs to be doing that. We wanted to do that. You know, we could have stayed working with somebody else doing whatever. And there's no shade in that at all. But what I'm saying is you're an entrepreneur. You really have the power to take control of your future. And yeah. so. You know, I'm going to jump in there for a minute because I think that it is so critical. I know that it is so critical because I experienced this myself when I was a newbie. I would just kind of put the money in and I had it or I didn't. And, you know, we kind of roll over and, you know, you didn't realize that you were actually behind, even though you get money coming in on the daily or the weekly, Mm -hmm. you think you're ahead, but you're not, or you, you know, and I think that sometimes beauty professionals, especially we attach our personal to our business six numbers. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it feels better to just not talk about it, not think about it. And we just fill the bucket and we just don't look. And I'm promising you audience, this podcast is really going to help you with that because it is so critical for you to know those numbers because it actually will empower you and you'll actually go, huh, I'm actually doing pretty well. Or wow, if I just worked one more hour a day, I could actually be seeing a profit, you know? So it really is, it really is a great idea to, to walk through those numbers and understand your story. So thank you. All right. So the knowing of the business financial health of your business. Yes. Yes. It's a very important to know that just because if anything goes array, you don't want it to be a surprise for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good point. So the second like very important reason I think you should know your beauty business's numbers is so that you can make strategic decisions for your business. I always say that every business decision either starts or ends with the numbers, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether you can afford the new product line or you should be using this materials versus this one or what what should your prices be? Do you need an annual bump up because of inflation? You know, Things like that. You could only know that if you know your numbers. And then third, we want to use our numbers as a tool to strategically grow. 
right? Yeah. So we don't want to be where we are right now in three or five or even 10 years. We want to grow. And we can use the numbers as a tool to be able to forecast out what we need to do to reach those future financial goals. So in addition to that, right, we are, we're talking about knowing numbers, right? How do we even get the numbers? To get the numbers, you got to do bookkeeping. You have to do bookkeeping, right? And just throw it in the bucket. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can always say this, and I'm going to sound like a broken record right now. You cannot manage what you do not track. Right. You cannot manage cost or revenue or even taxes for that matter if you are not tracking it in the word of where it is currently. Right. So what for the newbie out there, what is bookkeeping? Bookkeeping is simply the recording and the review of all of your financial transactions. So the money you make and the money you spend, keeping track of it and reviewing it either weekly. I suggest weekly. Or maybe if you're not that high volume, at a minimum monthly, right? Mm -hmm. I know people that look at their money every day, especially in the time that we're in. But what I would say is just get in the habit of recording and reviewing the ends, the money ins and out of your business. And you can do that on a, you know, nothing fancy. You can do it on an Excel spreadsheet. Or mm -hmm. you can use something more robust like a QuickBooks or, or a Zero. You know, whatever is sustainable for you to just create that habit of, of tracking and looking at your numbers. Now, I always say, you know, don't do bookkeeping for the sake of doing bookkeeping, right? Like, we're not, just, <laughs> let me just, you know, review these numbers and then you're done recording, you walk away. We got to understand the story behind the numbers. What, you know, what does it mean? Yeah. You know, uh, I found that I didn't get an actual bookkeeper until way later in my career because I wanted my hands on the numbers. And what I found was every month when I went to reconcile my bank account. Now, back in the day, I got a paper statement and I took my ruler and I went through every mm -hmm. single charge. Right. And nowadays we have it easier because we can just sync up our bank account with our QuickBooks. Right. Yeah. But be careful not to just hit reconcile like, Oh yeah, everything that's in there is what I do. Right. Because yeah. here's what I found. I find subscriptions. I didn't realize I had that. Like maybe I thought I'd signed up for a free trial and it's been charging me. And I had no idea mm -hmm. if, um, the cable bill I'd moved somewhere, um, into a new location and I had internet, you know, the package with the phone and stuff, which mm -hmm. I don't have the phone anymore, but you know what I mean? And yeah. all of a sudden after the year was up, I didn't realize they were, instead of 99 a, a month, they were charging me 129 a month and I was able to call. And you're really able to jump on those automated costs and say, oh, wait, uh -uh. that's not what I brought in, yeah, you know, and yeah, you can yeah. really get your hands on it. So I recommend from my spa experience is you go through every single line, line item, get everything categorized, right? It is so empowering to go, Oh, uh, uh, you're not charging me for that and getting, getting, you know, credits back and getting the money back. Like it feels really good to, you know, not have anyone else stealing from your pot. You yeah. are know exactly what's in there. And I love the ability to see my profit and loss to see mm -hmm how much money I actually brought in versus all of those little expenses. People think, oh, just write it off. Mm -hmm. Just buy this, go on a trip and write it off. Well, mm -hmm. it's not like that. So talk about profitability yes, and yes. Where, what that means and how, if we're doing our numbers right, it really is so critical to understand. Absolutely. So in terms of profitability, you know, sometimes people just look at the numbers like, yep, I don't see red, so I'm good. But it's the, the story is, is much more than that, right? So you can have a very, um, you can have high revenue. You can have high revenue, but still be not profitable. But still, you can bring in all this money and still at the end of the day, had a loss in your business. And that is the worst, to know the money came in, but all of it plus more, went out right so when we talk about profitability i want you guys to know think of it two ways two ways not either or but both together right 
you're gonna have, we're gonna talk about gross profit margin. And what this is, is all the money you make, so all of your revenue, minus the direct cost of providing your service. So when we're talking about sugaring, right? And you have all of the materials that you use to make, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here on the, the terminology, <laughs> it's but okay. to make your, you know, the sugaring paste, is that correct? They actually purchase the paste. They purchase the paste. Okay. So yeah. you're not making it. Nope. Then you are. They shouldn't you, be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you are purchasing the paste, the purchase cost of that paste is the, is your cost of goods sold. Yep. Plus whatever materials that you're using to apply it onto the body. Yep. That is your cost of goods sold. All whatever your gloves, the, all your gauze, all your cotton rounds, all your yep. tweezers, sticks, all of that. Mm -hmm. All of that. Everything you use to deliver that service to your client. Those are all your cost of goods sold, right? After you say revenue minus cost of goods sold, that is your gross profit margin. If that number is positive, that means that your sugaring service is profitable. It's profitable, yes. Yes. right? It's profitable. But then there's another level to this. After, after gross profit margin, you're going to have all the costs just to run your business. These are the indirect costs, right? So your, for, for example, your, um, your cost to book appointments, that's not directly tied to sugaring, but you need it for your clients to book time with you to receive your service. So that's an indirect overhead cost, right? Take away all those costs. Subtract all of those costs from your gross profit margin, and you're going to end up with a bottom number, and that is going to be your net profit margin. That's going to tell you if your overall business is profitable, because sugaring could be profitable, but if your overhead is high, your overall business is not profitable. Mm -hmm. You're still losing money, even though sugaring is profitable, your overhead is just way too high. Or, or maybe you're charging too less for your service. Mm -hmm. I see that all the time. People that just start out and want to just be kind and charge $40 for a Brazilian. It's like, that's oh. not going to get you to where you need to get. <laughs> no. I've, I've, oh my God. You know what? As a regular Brazilian getter, right? I've never paid that low for a person. <laughs> well, and there's a reason because at the end of the day, if you're not making, if you're breaking even, mm -hmm. you might as well not charge them at all. Or if you are losing money, you're paying them, you're paying your customers in essence yeah. for the yeah. right to sugar them. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Let's not do that. We Let's need them to pay that. us and, and to have a healthy business, you know, moving here on out. Mm -hmm. How do you recommend that people measure business performance? Absolutely. So when you want to think about, okay, how is my business doing? I always start with, first off, compare your current numbers. So every month you're in, compare it to last month. Mm -hmm. Did you, did your revenue increase? Did your profitability increase? And if not, if it did, great. Whatever you're doing, consider leaning in more into that because it's clearly working, right? So if you know that you spend more time on social media or you know you got out in your local area and talked about your business more and made real connections, keep do lean into that because it's clearly paying off. But if you uh, decreased from prior period, then you, you really got to like hone in on why this happened. What was the difference in some of the things that you were doing? Now, it could be very, very, very explainable. Oh, we were, you know, I was sick. So I, I missed a week or two, right? Or you had turnover, you lost a person or whatever, right? You have to reduce capacity. COVID cases are going up. Mm -hmm. It could be very, very explainable. And, but you still have to do the comparison to even know, yeah. to even know how you did, you know, from month to month. And I recommend doing it from month to month. Week to week, that's kind of too soon. If you drag it out two months, 
that may be too late to really hone in on a problem or take advantage of something that actually works. Yeah. It's really critical to know those numbers, to take out the taxes, to take out the fees for professionals, like any, you know, CPA fees, subscriptions and things that you have really take it down to what you're actually making and really ask yourself, like tighten up those business hours. You know, if make the most of your time, work smarter, not harder. If you find, I had a sugar pro and one of our last coaching calls in the sugar tribe. And she said, I have all these clients. Like, I, I don't know how to make any more money because I don't have any more room in my schedule. That's when you take a look at your schedule and you say, okay, can I raise my prices or, and, or what kind of retail am I missing out on and leaving on the table? And that will be on your profit and loss as well. And you'll be able to say, huh, okay, here's an area that I can really watch. Or maybe you're spending. You can really take a look and go, you know what? If I just pay off these credit cards, I'll be able to realize more money and then I won't be working as hard. So that profit and loss statement, which we get out of QuickBooks or zero, um, really is the roadmap to your business. And don't be afraid of it. Kanisha, don't you see people in your practice yeah. that are just afraid of that, that little chart that tells everybody yeah. how their business is doing? Yeah, absolutely. And what I say to that is, you know, number one, you know, no one is expecting you to be the numbers bookkeeping CFO guru, right? Mm -hmm. So, so let's take, um, I don't want to say ego out of it, but remove your, your personal feelings mm -hmm. from the numbers. They're mm -hmm. just numbers. They are not a reflection of you as a person or a beauty boss for that matter. They're just numbers. And the good thing about numbers is that we can control them. Yeah. They can go high or they can go low based on our behavior. So if you, if you go to it and you don't like what you see, take it. The good thing is you can change that. Right. Mm -hmm. So you ignoring it, it only makes the situation worse. Mm -hmm. So we got to eat that frog and just look at those numbers. And then the more you look at them, the easier it gets, yeah. the less scary it gets. Yeah. So we, we just got to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we're really going to be smarter and stronger and being able to go get it, you know? So you've decided whether you're an employee, independent contractor, or booth renter in these episodes, you've figured out how to pay yourself, whether you're a sole proprietor or a corporation or how that looks. We have given you a bird's eye view of that. You're starting to, you know, have you gotten your QuickBooks or your zero by the time you re-listen to this podcast and you're really taking a look at how your business is doing, these pieces will help you to not be surprised on tax day. You're, you know, we talked about quarterlies in, in the episode we did a while back. We talked about filing your taxes and we're going to bring you back, Kenesha, for a few more episodes on, you know, write-offs. Like, can you write off? What does that mean? A lot of people say, I'll just write it off. Well, you can't write something off if you don't have the money to pay for it. <laughs> you can't go taking trips, you know, and writing off rental cars and all this stuff if you don't have the ability to. So we're going to talk about things like that in episodes to come. And if you, any of you have questions for Kanisha, she can be found in the show notes and all over our love to sugar and our Instagram. And as well, you can get in touch with us always because we're here to answer your questions, but really ask the questions that you want us to talk about in this podcast, because we are ready, willing, and able to do these kind of mini classes in the podcast to get you all schooled up because it is time to work smarter not harder Absolutely. and to really succeed no matter what happens in 2021. So we got this. Thank you, Kanisha. And I look forward to seeing you very soon on the next episode with the beauty CPA. If you are ready to get strong financially with your beauty business with the beauty CPA, check out the show notes for her free ultimate tax deductions guide for beautypreneurs and join her in the beautypreneur finance Academy. I know that you will seriously benefit from it. Speaking of benefit, have you joined the Sugar Network yet? It's the latest tool to get you surrounded by educators and vendors and fellow sugar professionals, and it will help you take your skills to the next level and really network in our industry. 
And finally, if you're looking to get sugared or you want to take your skills up a notch, join us in love to sugar.com. Looking forward to the next podcast and stay sweet and strong in 2021.